Hey, welcome to the Lockdown Cavs podcast. I'm Chris Manning. That is Evan Damrell. On today's show, we're going to look back at the Cavs Magic game. And we're going to talk about if we're hot and cold, hot or cold rather, on a few different Cavs players today. That's going to be Moses Brown and Lowry Marketing. Let's get into it. Cavs need a three. Sexton works on Irving, trying to get loose. He'll fire. Knocks it down. Ground. Here goes Okoro to the bucket. And oh my, Okoro throws it down. Ten seconds to go. Here comes Colin Sexton. Sexton chased by Hill off to Stevens. Oh my. 45 ticks to go. That shot is blocked by Nance. Get that big stuff out of here. Prince knocks down that Harden pass. Garland's there. Garland upstairs for Allen. Oh, look out. There you go. That's called team ball right there. Welcome to the Lockdown Cavs podcast, your daily look at the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm Chris Manning. That is Evan Damerill. I cover the Cavs primarily for Fear the Sword and Diamond Up Rocks. Evan is at Fear the Sword, but also Facebook's right down you could, which you could subscribe to today. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out prizepicks.com, use the promo code NBA, or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. On today's show, we're going to look back at Cavs Magic. We know the schedule's been a little funky this week, but we're coming in hot here. And then we're going to look at some hot or cold on some different players. Today is going to be Moses Brown in segment two. And in segment three, that's going to be Lowry Marketing. And that will, this will also be the theme of our next show, which is going to be dropping midday on Thursday. This is coming out late Wednesday. Those three players on Thursday are going to be Isaac Okoro, Carrot Silvert, and Lamar Stevens. But Evan, buddy, what's going on? How are you? Not a whole lot, man. Just living the dream, as everyone says. Uh, I'm feeling a little burnt out like the Cavs are right now, but I'm hanging in there. How are you? I doing good. Um, I like the Cavs and probably uh, fading a little bit right now. Energy wise, it's been a it's it, the season has been a long one and but we're we're grinding through here. I mean, I, there's not a ton for me I think to say about Cavs magic, right? Like I think this is just a bad loss. I think you can look at the players that were out. I think you can look at all of these things and, and label those as context or excuses or whatever language you want to use. I I don't have like a ton to say about that loss other than it's bad. And when you like lose a game in part because is is Isnas Bradikas gets an offensive rebound and, and scores late in this game. Like that that's just tough. That that's a tough pill to swallow as you're competing for playoff positioning late in a season. So I want to ask you, what defined this loss to you? And and how much of it do you feel like we can attribute just to who is missing right now? And how and versus how much of a uh, is this a product of what isn't working and what didn't work work in this game? It to me it seemed like it's like a little bit of everything, I think. I think it's just the Cavs showing general fatigue from the season in general. I think having Darius Garland be a bit of a one-trick pony right now, just kind of being like they give the ball to him and say, all right, Darius, go make something happen on offense. Like that's just not viable, obviously, for long-term success. I think Karis LeVert's overall fit's just been rocky. I think that's been tough, too. Larry Markkinen has been meshing a little bit lately, which is promising, but it's energy stuff. I think it's – chemistry issues and i also think it's the lack of overall just frontline defense that you get from mobley and allen and then also they play down to the magic a little bit like they put their foot on the gas to start the game and then just really lost all sense of urgency or just desire to keep going and you watch them fall apart in spectacular fashion and you and i were kind of texting back and forth during the game and i'm just like this is the worst loss of the season without a doubt in my mind like that's just where i'm at at this point yeah, I, I don't know if it, if I have it as like the worst loss, but it's it's bad, especially within the circumstances of you kind of needed it. And if yep. you were in, you know, they're eight and a half point favorites, uh, according to our friends at Ben Online. Like the Magic have no reason to try and win games right now. The Cavs have a lot of reasons to try and win games right now. And it looked if you would if you had taken someone and like put them in front of this game and had them watch basketball for the first time. I think they would have looked at the Magic as the team that kind of had more more to play for versus the Cavs having more to play for. Like, that's how it felt just kind of watching it. Um, Evan, two quotes for me from, from the post game stood out to me. I'm going to just read them real quick. First is from Kevin Love. Quote, um, and re- this is in reference to Evan Mobley and Jared Allen being out. Quote, those are two guys that are moving forward, going to be competing for all defensive team in the NBA and could be in that first team, maybe even compete for defensive player of the year. 
So we definitely miss them and what they bring to the table. We hope that they're very that they're very close to being back. I don't know the answer to that, but they mean too much to us, to who we are as a team, our identity, our defensive presence. Larry Markkinen also said in reference to these two guys, quote, they can anchor the defense. They've been doing a great job of communicating, and we obviously miss them. But we don't know when they're going to come back, and we've got to figure it out. To, tr- to figure it out, to try, try to figure it out with, without them as of now. I think we can play a lot better, especially even with those guys out, we could have done a lot better job tonight. I think both those things, as I think you said, are just true. I think that is just the reality of what the Cavs sort of are right now. We can look at this and say, yes, they are missing the two key pieces that the system in large part in large part was built around and things have kind of crumbled without them. At the same time, I, th- I think you can look at this and say, you know what, like this is not the sharpest Cavs. Like effort wise, in terms of how, how I thought they looked from from pillar to post, they looked better over the weekend against Philly. And in the game before that, then they did against Orlando, like full stop. Yeah, no, they like they they they, they showed up to play Philly. Um, they showed up to play Orlando the first time around. Granted, that's before Evan Mobley went down. It's before Larry Markin had that yeah, scare. It's before that, Lamar Stevens yes. had that scare. Like the win was taken on a Cleveland sales against Orlando, but um, at the same time, it's just really tricky, I guess, to think about. The logistics of it because like you said there were certain expectations there's a certain precedence coming precedent coming into this game that the Cavs just kind of knew like they had to go in they had to win this game to stay in the thick of things to even be in a conversation for the sixth seed i think that would have been eliminated just naturally over the coming days if they play, especially against brooklyn and milwaukee but they fell flat and you can attribute to a lot of things but it just JB Bickerstaff said there was no defensive presence. There was no defensive identity in this game. I think it's just been the new low point from this gradual decline for the Cavs post all-star break. And I just don't know when they're going to stop slipping, I guess. Yeah. I, I mean, it seems like you would hope that, you know, if these got one of them comes back Friday, if one, if both of them can come back for the end of the year and, and for the plan, like maybe that's enough to get you, to the playoffs. I think it feels as if the wind is again, sort of out of the sails of, of where we are at. And look, I mean, you, you lost to the Orlando magic, like this season is still a success with or without that loss. I think just based on how far it feels like they've come and, and what I think the optimism should be for the future of this, of this franchise right now. But oh loss, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, the long term no, prospects of this team. Yeah. You gotta be really high short on term. them, but short, short term, term it's, it's suboptimal as somebody points, everybody points out. I say it too often. This was a suboptimal outcome and possibly. Here's the thing, the, Evan, it's a good word. So don't, you, you, who cares? You use a good word. I don't care. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate this it. This is what I got. You know, like I respect our listeners, but just come on. <laughs> like you host a podcast every day and, uh, and not repeat yourself sometimes. That's fair. Just um, saying, just saying, just saying. Long story short, I think this is disappointing. I uh, jokingly went into our podcast Discord server and just hit the everyone tag and said, hey, y'all good? And a lot of people are like, oh, this sucks. I'm just like, yeah, it sucks, but it's easy to get fixated on the now, but you got to focus a little bit on the long term. That's why I've been saying for a while now, like, I wonder how this Cavs team will look early next season or even this time next year to see how they kind of respond to the season now that the expectations are in place. And also... Again, a lot of these Cavs players aren't used to playing meaningful basketball in March and April and are now going to have to gear up for the playing tournament, which kind of chuckled myself that the Cavs are selling playing tournament tickets already. Um, And assuming that they're hosting both games, I'm like, that's a little presumptuous. You guys could slide to 10 still. Look, capitalism, Evan, does does not stop. That's fair. That's the fact. That's the fact of life. All right. After the break, though, we're going to move into our speaking of capitalism. Yeah, speaking of capitalism, uh, we're gonna go into the break. After the break, we're gonna go. Hot, we're gonna say we're for hot or cold from based on what we've seen lately on some different players and in a little series here. First player up is Moses Brown, who's obviously played a big role for this team. And in in, without Jared Allen, we're gonna dive into him after this. But Evan, first, I want you to tell everyone about our friends at Price Picks. Sure thing. All right, NBA fans, are you looking for daily fantasy options for the NBA? Then you need to try the award-winning app, Prize Fix. Prize Fix is daily fantasy made easy. I love it, and we know you'll love it too. You pick two to five players and an over under other projections, and you went up to 10 times, sorry, two hands, 10 times on any entry. And it's just you versus the projected numbers. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Use the award winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Prize Picks offers a variety of options. Prize Tick. 
Picks offers any prop you can think of from points scored to rebounds, even steals. Prize Picks allows mixed sports entries as well. And Prize Picks doesn't just doesn't just offer the NBA. They have options on the college basketball, college football, NFL, MLB, soccer, MMA, and so much more. So for a limited time, Prize Picks has an exclusive no-brainer of an offer for all of our listeners. If you sign up today, you'll get $50 for free. If a player in your first prize fix entry scores a single point, but you must use code NBA like the league. That's right. This is an exclusive offer available for all Locked On Cavs fans. Sign up today and use the code NBA for $50 for free. If a player in your first prize fix entry scores a single point. Chris, lobbing it back to you. All right. I also got to tell everyone about our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters, Championship Odds, podcast, and reviews for all the different leagues this season. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. For instance, right now, you can go bet on the Lakers next head coach where David Fisdale is a minus 300 favorite. Quinn Snyder is plus 450 and Doc Rivers is plus 475. LeBron's an or option on there too if you go, to, don't go deeper on the betting line. Waste of money, but yeah. Or if you're into the WNBA, you can bet on title odds with the Connecticut Sun, currently the favorite to win the title this year at plus 350. And Las Vegas Aces, now coached by Becky Hammond with Asia Wilson going to shoot some threes. That's really fun. They're next up at plus 375. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. That's bet online. That's where the game starts. All right, back here on Lockdown Cavs. If you're looking for a great second listen to the day, by the way, may I recommend Lockdown Wins Basketball? I just revamped the lineup. Howard Magdal and the whole crew over there is doing great stuff. Go check them out. All right, Evan, let's go hot or cold on Moses Brown. Here are his just raw counting stats with the Cleveland Cavaliers in 11 games. 6.7 points per game, 6.0 rebounds, shooting 61.5% from the field. Uh, he's shooting 68% at the rim. And even though these numbers are very small, like they're not like massive double-double numbers out of what we've seen from Jared Allen at, at center, these are sort of career best numbers for him in his 11 games. The defensive rating with Garland, Levert, Okor, Mark, and Brown, one of the, the starting lineups we've seen, the most common one we've seen of late, that has a defensive rating of 131.3, offensive rating of 112.7. Here, here's where I'm at. He's fine. I think his numbers look sort of good because Darius Garland's really good at maximizing big centers who can catch lobs and dunk. That is a skill Darius Garland has. He enhances that kind of player. His effort's been good. I think, you know, he, I think he, the defense has been, it's not Jared Allen, but he's been, I think, kind of what the best of what you could expect from him in, in a pinch here. I think going forward, this is a good young center um, that can be useful to use a third center if he's going to be your, like, your backup in case of injury and foul trouble and things of that nature. He's fine if you can figure out a deal to keep him on a reasonable deal this summer. He's, you know, I think done the best you kind of hope for in these circumstances. So I'm, I'm a, like actually like a little bit like like on the warmer side of this. He's like fine, but I'm I don't think he's been, I I don't think it's I, I don't think it's like blown anyone away. I mean, I think if you look at the counting stats, he looks a lot better. I think you hit the the head on the nail by saying that Darius Garland is just the next level of his game is just kind of making the people around him better. And Moses Brown being the biggest case study of that. But yeah, just in terms specifically, of specifically, I think that kind of center, it's like yeah. something he makes just yeah, so much better. Well, yeah, just pick and roll, easy lob threat, uh, easy putbacks, good opportunities for that as well, just because some of the players Cleveland has can't miss. Um, sometimes Darius is heaving up shots just to keep the Cavs in the game and having a reliable, not a reliable big man, but a big body. And that's kind of what Moses Brown is for me now. I think you're warmer on him than I am. I think utilizing him as a two way big just to get you through the rest of the season uh, is smart on the Cavs part. I don't think there's an issue for me, at least he's better than having taco fall on the roster. Like no disrespect to taco fall, but I think just Moses Brown has a little bit more of athletic ability, but it's not much, but back to the counting stats. Yeah. A lot of that's inflated by Darius Garland, but I think again, we wouldn't be having this conversation if Jared Allen and Evan Mobley weren't out right now. He wouldn't even be playing for the Cavs. He would probably still be probably in the G league or something like that. Again, no disrespect to him, but like you said, if you bring him along, it's just, a third big going forward, that's fine. But I watch him play and he doesn't pass the eye test for me because he's just a body that you throw out there at other bigs just to rack up fouls and maybe kind of slow down and deter somebody physically if you want to impose him, a la like Kendrick Perkins in the playoffs for the Cavs. But that's all I just really see from him. I don't think he's really like a super reliable big, but he's also the only option the Cavs have because you can't put Larry Markman at the five for 
30 plus minutes. You can't put Kevin Love Love in the same situation as well. Um, Moses Brown is just kind of all you have right now in terms of true center depth. And you're just trying to make it work. Him and Ed Davis, of course, but that's what you're just trying to make it work. Yeah, uh, we will get to marketing because the the numbers of him at the five are sort of funny. Um, Brown, like I, I am, I am high, I am like hotter on him and warmer on him, just in the sense of like I think he, if he's going to be like your third center, you can develop him, and because he's 21, 22 years old, like this is still, like a very. Oh no, I like, agree. I yeah. just think but it, what but you have right it, now, I'm cold, but I could be warmed up. If you don't have to ask him to play meaningful minutes, like if he's your third oh, big, yeah. third or fourth big off the bench, that's great. That's yeah. perfect use of him. I just think asking him to start as a tall ask, Darius Garland's making him look a hell of a lot better than he actually is as a player. Yes. And that's just kind of where I'm at right now. Like yeah, in like the if moment, he, if he, if he's like a spot starter for you next season, right? Like if you go into next year and like Jared misses a game, cause he tweaks his ankle and takes it off and you have to spot start him. Like that's fine. That's fine. Brother, I'm going to tell you something. Um, <clears throat> the Cavs drafted a big man third overall <laughs> in this last draft. He could start yeah. at the five. You slide Mark at the four if he's still here, and then you start okay, Karis okay. at the three. Like, either start him at the five or play him like 10 minutes off the bench. So you're yes, not that's playing, like, fine. Yeah, 10 that, minutes is fine. Yeah, or like that, I'm saying, like, on, I was, like I was talking to a friend about this, like the Darius Garland example. If you yeah. rest Garland on a back-to-back against a bad team, you bring back Rondo as like your third point guard. That's when you play Rondo five to ten minutes a night because you supplant a lot of those big man minutes, but you need a, just a traditional five to maybe soak up some body minutes as well. Uh, gotta say the Rondo. Uh, to just go back to the Magic game for a second. The Rondo like holding the ball and trying to throw that cross court pass to Kevin Love that got picked off as a pick oh. six. Well, I was just like my brain in real time. I was like, don't do it. I know you want to do it, and then he did it, and it was bad. Um, I thought of you and Isaac Okoro had that pick six, but it was just too little, too late. Yeah. Uh, if there's if also, there's a, I thought of you and Adam Silver said that the league is going to find a way to eliminate take fouls immediately. He said that. Yeah. My guy. He said he said My it during guy, the uh, he said it during the um, owners meeting. I saw, that I saw what he said about. Uh, I saw what he said about the 82 game schedule and like guys needing to play more basically and like so that that's what I'd seen. I did not see the take fouls and take. Oh baby, let's go. Ah, uh, this is. Well, he said to play in tournaments, a permanent feature. Yeah, and then he said, somebody asked about take fouls. He's like, yeah, it's a real issue. We need to find a way to penalize teams for it. Because oh, it is, it's killing the flow of the game. He wholeheartedly agreed with that. Adam, it would be hard to get my cell phone number. With your Chris power. is jacked give me, right now. Give me, give me, I, He's going like, to kick down his bedroom door and like scream at his wife. He's sleeping. I, He's like, getting rid of take fouls. I would not do that. I could go get like a nice pump right now and, and feel great about it. If there's one thing that is not uh great about brown that i think is one of the things we've seen from him is that like he he does have like a good block rate like he's like blocking like about three percent of shots which is like actually like solid enough the pro- solid enough i just i when i watch him play i'm like for some reason also counting cleaning the glass has him like listed as a wing and like i just don't understand like there's got to be like an error in the code my guy but yeah. um he he does he is fouling like guys like like six per, like at a pretty high rate like it's in the it's like last like it's he's 6. playing 2%. like a 22 year old at the center yeah, position and he's, but more. he's like whereas Jarrett like is very crafty at like using his length and like like brown is sort of just like a, a force and if, if, if you want again like if this is a guy that um is like he's on a two-way contract the str- the point of signing him to a two-way is not just to like keep him around for the rest of the season. You know, have matching rights on him in the summer if you if you so choose to extend him a qualifying offer. If this is a guy that you look at if you're the Cavs and say, look, we are spending lots of money. We spent a high draft pick and eventually we'll be spending lots of money for Evan Mobley, who's a big and will play some five for us. We're paying Jared down $20 million a year. We don't want to pay our third center. Like, we don't want to invest actual resources in that division. It's not worth it. I would agree with that, right? And I no, think they have other I, they, they have other needs they need to go address via like whether it's a draft pick or whether it's like free agents. Like they have, if they have resource they have resources. Wings what resources they guards. have? They should, Wings they should, and point guards is they, what the Cavs need to focus on this offseason. Yeah, they should spend them elsewhere. If Moses Brown is like your plan to be like your third string center, spot play minutes when you need him to, and you keep developing him behind the scenes, that to me is like adequate. And I think like he's shown enough where it's like okay, like. He also just like fits their profile of what they want right now. I think from fives, I think that's part of it. Yeah, but you don't have the novelty of Taco Fall being a mascot, though. I that's mean, probably shame. not. Probably not selling jerseys as much, but you know, alas. third in the G League block leader, uh, Taco Fall. Thank you very much. 
Yes, uh, he's he's been fun. All right, after the break, we're going to dive into one more player today. That's going to be Lowry Marketing. But Evan, first, you're going to tell everyone about our friends at Rock Auto. You're right. Skirt, skirt. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it is now impossible for your local chain's auto smart store to stock all the parts you need. Winder often pointless or seemingly intimidating questions and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? For example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump is $353 from a chain store. It's $216 at Rock Auto. And with how much a gas costs these days, geez, you might need to save some money on a fuel pump. So if you're interested, go to rockauto.com right now and see all the products available for your car, truck, minivan, vehicle, whatever. Right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? I know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Check them out today at rockauto.com. All right, let's move on here. Let's talk about Larry Marketing. Evan, before I run through the, the numbers of marketing, I wanna I wanna ask you, I, I are you broadly based on what we've seen of, of marketing, specifically kind of since Jared Allen has gone down, specifically since we've seen him how to have to take on a different role for this team. What what have you thought of what we've seen from Lowry in that context? Uh, you're seeing him play more of his natural position at the four, which I think you're seeing that's part of why he's having a big of scoring bump. You're also asking him more of him offensively as well versus what you got with Mobley and Allen kind of gobbling up all the shots that Darius Garland is providing to them. Um, I'm indifferent on Larry. I, I don't think he's a three long term, obviously. Um, if you keep him as like a bench big, I don't know if that's tenable or feasible just with how much money you have committed to him. So it's just kind of murky because of the Mobley and Allen factor is the clear, like established duo uh, next to Garland. But I like what he provides in theory. I think the idea of Larry Markin is still a really fascinating and captivating player. Um, but you and I have always just had this problem. He is a wing who is seven feet tall, and that's how he plays. But and the Cavs are trying to utilize him like that. But he has the God-given abilities of a big man where he has no lateral quickness, and he just gets torn apart on defense. And I've seen been seeing that quite a bit teams are hunting Larry marketing on defense on offense when he's trying to defend them in isolation because he doesn't have that safety valve uh, or blanket I should say of Mobley and Allen kind of covering him up and then Okoro and Stevens possibly next to him at times as well yeah I, I think specifically the without Mobley without Allen we've seen a different kind of player um, defensively it feels like I think you know that Lakers game kind of stands out as as the one in a lot of ways because LeBron is so surgical in that game but I I think he's been picked on a lot more without cover i think we're seeing him play five which like in theory you should we should be like a useful use of him and if you look at his frame you look at his skill set because here's the seven footer that can shoot like that that's like it should be a useful in theory marker. rebound yeah because right. of his size right which but you can't really and like if you look at the the numbers so far garland lavert of course stevens marketing has played 70 possessions it's better it's one it's outscoring teams by one point per 100 possessions uh, it's scoring 132.9 per inner possessions and giving up 131.8 per inner possession. So it's been really good on offense and just as bad on defense, which is like a hard way to live. It doesn't feel like the way you would want. Like, like it doesn't feel like the way the Cavs have gotten to the season. And I think having different looks to to go to is a good thing to develop. I don't know if it's it's an interesting thing that I think JB, a button JB. It doesn't a strike me as something he's totally been comfortable with throughout the season. And number two it doesn't feel like it just feels so out of place with what the rest of they've done this year in a way that like, I actually don't hate the kind of zag on it, but it's like, it just doesn't, it just feels so different. And like marketing as like a, he, he can't, we were talking about this uh, during the magic game over text. Like he cannot, he has to basically just like play drop and he has to sink back, but he can't sink back like Allen and cover all the space and sort of defend two guys at once. He's kind of getting picked on it when you're, when you're playing him a drop and you're not going to switch with him to early in the shot clock at the very least. Like it's, it's kind of complicated. Evan, you're hearing his numbers for the last 15 games. Um, It's 15 because a that's as far as it, it, it sh I wanted it to be 16, but NBA.com backslash hats only let you do the last 15. How many um, ice cream are you telling me? Yes. 33.6 minutes per game, 47.1% from the field, 39.2% from three, 6.2 rebounds uh, for the year. 
30, 31.1 minutes per game, 14.6 points per game, 44% from the field, 35.3% from three, 5.7 rebounds. Not objectively what, terrible. What we, but, but it's interesting because like his three-point numbers are up. He's scoring a little bit more. He's playing better offensively, and yet it feels like the defense has like regressed because uh, it, it feels almost like he finally has found his stride to someone offensively. And yet the defense is struggling because like the, the system that supported him all year is kind of not existent right now because of two yep. certain players that are out. Yep, that's just exactly right. I think it's, again, Darius Garland really maximizing playing the big man and also just Larry Markin playing his natural position at the four and kind of just getting more shots overall without Mobley and Allen on the floor. You're really seeing this offensive bump from him. And I think having an elite point guard like Garland just makes it a lot easier for him as well. I'm going <clears> to... <throat> I've inferred this for a while chris knows this because I, sh- I i shared this with him pretty early i, I don't think larry marketing finishes his contract in cleveland i think he's a trade asset for them him for them and you do wonder if maybe the Cavs try to use his contract because the last year isn't guaranteed he agreed to that just to get out of chicago um if the Cavs maybe package that maybe they package him with jetty osmond maybe they package him with isaac okoro who we'll talk about on tomorrow's episode to go make a actual tangible upgrade at the wing position. Like if there's somehow something there, or like if you go get like a DeJounte Murray and you bring Colin Sexton up the bench and then you pair Garland and Murray together. And like, you just absolutely grind people defensively with Murray is just like being your point of attack next to a core if you're able to keep him. Yes. I think Markinen is playing well. Um, like you said, the defensive numbers have just kind of gone sideways without Mobley and Allen there. And I think that's just kind of what we always known about him. As a player, just because we have a lot of footage from his time in Chicago, we have a lot of footage from this year in Cleveland, and he's just not a good defensive player, and it is what it is at this point, and you have to kind of look at, like, what is his offensive potential? Well, you're kind of seeing a little bit more of it because you're asking him to be the second or third option in Cleveland's offense right now. Yeah, it was, like, very telling when they were trying to get an easy bucket at the end of the Magic game, and they were saying, we need to run a quick action and get someone a shot. It was Darius Garland run a pick and pop with Lowry Marketing. And like the shots weren't bad, and he actually shot well overall. No, that's that's a smart play call because you're playing to the strengths of your your best personnel. Yeah, yeah. Um, So like I get what happened there. It's just a a, a little bit tricky and a little bit suboptimal. Um, So yeah, interesting stuff with Lowry. I think it's. I would like to. So you had a cold on him. I'm 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 like sort of like I'm like slightly warmer just because I think the, the offense has been objectively better the defense has been like this i think i was i think the defense is sort of what i think it always was we're just seeing it without like the cover that has sort of made it tenable throughout the year no i agree with that i think i'm more lukewarm on him because i yeah, it's fine i'm seeing some of the frustration chicago fans might have had with him just overall like i'm understanding that a lot more now that he's just kind of like the central focus and once Mobley and Allen are back, hopefully they're back Friday against Brooklyn. It feels like it might be trending that way. Just, I don't know. It just seeing them both on the road trip kind of tells me like, okay, they're gearing up to get back on the court, but in Orlando, but at the same time, if it's Larry marketing out there again, you're just going to watch probably Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving take turns bullying him. So, and that's going to well, be not the, fun I, for 48 minutes. Look on that note, I want to end the show on, with some context of when we're recording this recording. This at 11 46 PM. On Wednesday, April 6th, go up that evening. As we're recording this, it is halftime of Knicks Nets, a game that I assumed the Brooklyn Nets would win. They have six. It's actually 8 46 p.m., but it's not 11 46 p.m. You said 11 46. Okay. It's 8 I was like, Chris, it's up. are you three hours in the future right now? Oh, Always, bro. Ne- the Nets but are getting smoked. Dang. Nets are getting smoked. If you're looking at like the chant, like as, as we're looking at this year, they will be off on. Thursday, as the other Cavs, before these two teams play on Friday, assuming they lose this game, they will be a game and a half back of the Cavs. Um, and they're a game and a half back right now. Oh, there's something. They'll be two full games back of the Cavs. This is why you're here. You keep me in line. But they're also tied with Atlanta right now. So I think if they lost, Atlanta would jump to eight, and Brooklyn would drop, rock, drop the nine and play Charlotte. And if it's ended up lasting that way, you would much rather host the Atlanta Hawks than the Brooklyn Nets. You just yeah, host the Atlanta Hawks and punch your ticket to Boston. Yeah. <laughs> or try then, to, oh, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's where we're at. Okay, that's going to be it. 
We're going to be back for part two of this hot or cold series. Again, the players covered Isaac Okoro, Karis LeVert, Lamar Stevens. And then Thursday show that will go up late on Thursday evening. Danny Cunningham is coming through. We're going to preview Cavs Nets, talk about uh, expectations and, and where we're at with this Cavs team as we kind of set the stage for what is to come. But until next time, I'm Chris. That's Evan. Be well. And uh, we'll talk to you here very shortly.